just shed some spotlight on the female entrepreneurs in the Indian industry today and start a movement which is called Confident in Your Skin. It was it's mostly done so that we can give credit where it's due for uh, you know so many inspiring uh, women today and there are so many impressionable women today who are looking for role models just like you. So thank you, thank you once again for accepting our invite. Thank you, thank you, Shita. Thank you for having me over. All right, perfect. So, uh, Mansi, I want to understand from you. Why don't you walk me through? You know, why you started this journey, and was there like an inflection point in your life where you were just like, I want to start a venture of my own, and I want to do this? Like, talk to us a little bit about your work and your journey. Uh, I don't think it was. Uh that planned i mean um, i was uh, i finished my mba and i straight away got into a job with ibm and uh, after that i uh, went for my masters and that's when i wanted to kind of try something new and uh, that was the point like i it uh, like for example in my case the jury started as a classroom project when i was at the uh, at the business school and uh, it was during that time i got really excited with uh, you know with the entire idea and i wanted to give it a try so i came back to india and uh, i started the jory in 20, 2012 and we finally launched in 2013 so uh, i think uh, it was not like a super solid plan in the beginning but then uh, it happened to be nice nice you are actually one of the pioneers in the D2C industry, if I may. Like you started long <laughs> Thank you so through, much, if you, you know. say so. Yeah. So how, was, how has the journey been so far as a female entrepreneur? What kind of struggles do you think you know came your way in the beginning? And how did you navigate that? I'm so curious about it. Um. See, like, I, I always, uh, you know, uh, draw this parallel between entrepreneurship and life. Like... Uh, there is no journey without struggles, without tons of learnings, and that's what you re uh, that really uh, makes you what you are today. And uh, in our case, it was uh, nothing different. I mean, uh, it has taken um, a lot of time, effort, and energy from everyone on the team, and uh, we've collaboratively struggled and fought through it and came to where we are today. Uh, as I, I wouldn't say, like, I, I fundamentally actually do not believe in the idea of um, being there a difference between a male and a female entrepreneur because, uh, I mean, I, I don't come from that school of thought. And uh, however, uh, when I do hear stories about other people and the struggles and, you know, people who have a lot of... Uh, uh, responsibility or not having enough support system to uh, help with the family etc so I, I do uh, I do feel their pain however in my case I was I think blessed or thankful enough to have uh, a lot of support system around in the family and even when I had a baby uh, I was very uh, I, I mean, people started calling me that I'm a control freak because I would take my child to work every day. And he started going to office when he was one month old. I uh, And before uh, he was going to come, I made sure we had a nursery, we had uh, every support system that he needs. And I am not, uh, uh, you know, I am not having that mom's guilt. <laughs> of not spending enough time with him so in between my meetings and you know calls i would just walk in and uh, to check on him etc so i mean uh, as as long as female entrepreneurship is concerned i think it's purely a function of how you want to deal with it and i think it just requires a little bit of thought and planning and you can um, actually make the most of it in terms of uh, you know having that balancing act in life in uh, yeah. in terms of uh, struggles etc uh, i think it has been uh, similar to any other entrepreneur or entrepreneurial journey not uh, i mean nothing was really happening just because i was uh, a female and a female entrepreneur and there were no 
special uh, kind of struggles that did that i had but it was quite similar to everybody and uh, in the beginning uh, we uh, we've taken very very small baby steps grown very very slowly it was essentially a bootstrap startup though we started early but still we've taken our own time to come to where we are today and uh, in this in, in in this journey we would have we have seen so many people come and go in front of us in the similar industry so uh, i think it has been uh, very very um, thoughtfully uh, executed steps those smaller those short uh, slower but thoughtfully done and uh, not done in a haste just because other people are doing it so uh, yes i mean um, that's what uh, has keep us afloat so far and uh, we four times like covid where you see multiple d2c brands actually going out of market and uh, yes so i mean uh, that's that wow lots lots to unpack uh, thank <laughs> you so much for so many uh, lovely nuggets of information actually you are absolutely right i think planning ahead in advance does not only help it professionally but on a personal level also people fail to realize the importance of having say like a personal workspace you know or like a personal organization skill set for yourself so sure. that is such a, a good advice uh, for people like me who are like trying to make a mark in the industry as well so thanks for that um so on that note by the way like uh, you spoke about having a kid and then not having that mom guilt seep into you while still dabbling with you know your professional journey as well and i'm sure like there were so many challenges as a founder as an entrepreneur as well so any like uh, tips hacks that came your way when you were trying to navigate this uh, to strike a good work life balance uh, you know as women who are donning multiple hats personally and professionally um see i think uh, first first thing first that comes is health you know so health wise of course we all had our own personal challenges and journeys and uh, we uh, kind of figure a way around it i think other than that is um, uh you know when you are working and you your health is sometimes in favor and not in favor you know so first of all i just wanted to make sure that i have a comfortable life in office even if i want to sit down lie down you know <coughs> anything so i just um, for me it's like um, me going to office is a non negotiable so i will have to go and uh, irrespective so uh, i i know many people have very easy journeys you know they don't really Uh, feel it till the very last day, and uh, just in working till the last day before delivery. And uh, but I think it's it's very personal to everyone. And uh, first of all, I just wanted to make sure that there is enough comfort for me as an individual in office in terms of my even my workouts or even my yoga. I would do in office, and I had that um, kind of arrangement done for myself. and uh, also it actually helped because uh, we launched our kids collection during the time and we launched uh, uh, baby ayurveda and uh, because all of that was effectively a research it was like work that that i was doing myself for my own self and for the baby but uh, we thought might as well launch it because it's uh, so interesting a lot of research was going on a lot of thought and passion had gone into it and um, so it was like uh, um a huge uh, this thing like a segment of thought when it got a good response from people in fact sitting today uh, baby apparel is our uh, second biggest category in uh, in apparel and um, uh, du- during that time i mean uh, uh, i i started preparing uh, for making having enough support system preparing a nursery buying uh, you know like um, those uh, bamboo uh, bassinets and um, you know like different things for the baby room and uh, everything that was bought was two times because one for was for the house and one for, for was for office 
and um, it was uh, done in a way that there is no difference for the kid and there is no acclimatization after a problem the kid's gonna have so uh, i think uh, it was just I, I i will again say i was not planning it like it to happen like that but it was just the work that you do on a daily basis and then all of a sudden it strikes you to might as well make something out of it you know just add it to your assortment and let's try how people are going to uh, respond to it so uh, i think uh, it has been like that in terms of balancing act so it was it was just meant to be like that you know because there was uh, the ecosystem was like that so it was meant to be I want you to share some, you know, thoughts about investing in yourself. Like, did you embark on such a journey where there was a time in your life, a phase in your life, where you know you actively sought to invest in yourself? Like you mentioned about yoga, right, and health. So, in other areas of life as well, did you invest in yourself? I think uh, ever since I was a kid, I have been an active person. So I've been you doing mm-hmm. yoga since the school times. In fact, I'm a certified yoga practitioner. Oh, <laughs> and, lovely! Uh, wow. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, so yoga has been a part of life. Like yoga, walks, going out for morning walk, evening walk. So I was I was brought up like that. So I I had this as a part of my life, and uh, it's very difficult to uh, kind of live without it now. Uh, so it was not something that I kind of. invested in myself but it was like i was like that only from the very beginning so it was very well uh, very much a part of me and um, in fact when um, uh, people uh, is somebody who's not uh, who has not lived that kind of a life in the past sometimes i think they do feel challenged but um, essentially it's a function of and then they bring that discipline that uh you know they spend time on uh, working on their diets and workouts etc uh but i i i won't say i necessarily had to do anything in particular to uh, bring a new change in there so it was it was already like i would do yoga uh, once a day and it continued as is <laughs> yeah yeah and it shows i have met you so i can talk about it <laughs> and i think we also spoke very briefly about it and you said that the secret is yoga <laughs> so yeah, yeah I've, i've taken it with me all right nice uh, so you know on those lines actually people now have become really i think uh, invested in you know their bodily appearance or their physical appearance and you know how they how they look on a day to day basis but this has been a trend at least in the indian uh, you know diaspora where i think for women especially there are a lot of unrealistic beauty standards that have been set by by society right so uh, what are your thoughts on that like i would love to know if you can share uh, you know some some opinions and to give some strength to our uh, you know younger generation to not fall prey to the same especially in the uh, lives of an ever changing social media landscape right so any any uh, thoughts on that see i think it's very important to to understand your body your skin yourself you know and um, yeah i i remember when i met you i uh, i told you i'm a zero makeup person and uh, a moisturizer would be the max that i would put you know and we met at an event and i, I told you that i'm not even putting yeah. a uh, lipstick on i would just put like a lip balm on and uh, i know it's not uh, it's not that everybody does that but even if i have the time i don't think i have the patience i mean it's not in my interest area and uh, from the very beginning like as a as a child as a kid now we see kids you know too much into the makeup and you know even my own niece you know she's such a makeup freak and uh, all the kids going to school wearing makeup and uh, kids going to gym wearing makeup i mean this is insanity and i'm talking about the next generation i'm not even talking about ours i think we have uh, grown uh, in life to a point where we 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 know that this is something that we we can kind of make the decision for ourselves is it good or bad 
but however for kids are very persuasive i mean they are very easy to easy to get persuaded you know and uh, when i see that i feel really sad and sorry because uh, i remember when i was a kid and even if like uh, uh, not really like a toddler like not a um, but in my um, 10th grade or 11th grade even if i'm wearing a lipstick for an occasion you know like my family members would say what is this dark thing you're wearing you know why why like you know there there was like this um um you, you can say objection uh perhaps is a wrong word but there were questions around it and they were like why are you wearing it uh you know you're still a kid you don't uh, kids don't do that and uh, these days they have more liberty they have more freedom less questions are asked etc uh so however it i i fundamentally believe in this and at that time i think the old thought was that they should only be focusing on their studies and you know their activities and games and stuff but not makeup and not uh, getting dressed and not wearing makeup and i have come from that background so even after uh, uh you know i went to college and i started working and when i was like in uh, mainstream commercial market still uh, i would see people wearing makeup but i had never uh, i was never used to it we were always given like a cold cream or a moisturizer as a kid i i still am wearing that today i mean i um um it so it's the basic thing that we do as skin care you know but then again it's a very personal question uh people say that you don't need to because you don't get acne blah 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 so i said okay fine whatever it is but uh, i i think we all get certain issues you know skin wise and i think the way of approaching that is uh, uh not something that uh, you learn in a day for me it is uh, it has to be something which is like a home remedy or an ayurvedic concoction that your grandmothers would kind of recommend so i am that kind of a person however i do see the standards the brands which are completely built around this demand which is uh, curated and uh, you know and uh, there are standards in beauty which are like you said they are insane they are like it's not something that uh, uh, that is practically possible and people do have to understand the the long term damage that they will be doing to uh, yeah. you know their skin and body by by following that so uh, yes. i think it's uh, definitely a question of uh, the right kind of uh, guidance or uh, you know i think as adults we we should definitely be researching and thinking things through not just following what's trending and uh, also uh, because you said you're going to set an example for your kids also and uh, it's um, as kids i mean uh, like i said we were uh, there were questions or we were objectioned uh, however at least we they can be guided you know to uh, what to do and what not to do and uh, so i think that is uh, very very important so uh, it should be about uh, uh, first recognizing your own self your own skin type and body and secondly research about what you are putting on your skin being the biggest organ of your body what are you putting in it and that is uh, very very important and uh, yeah i think uh, a lot of uh, coaching and research is important to make the right choices for yourself right right yeah i think uh, as consumers today we have to be extremely mindful of you know what are we putting not only on our body <laughs> but inside our body as well so yeah thank you thank you for that answer um all right so this is you know women's day is approaching right now and uh, i just want to know from you like any last thoughts on women's day as an occasion or actually international women's day you know as an occasion and how can the society just generally do better for you know occasions like these or just for women empowerment 
again you know i'm i you must be thinking i'm just cross questioning mm -hmm. you but <laughs> so uh okay so i i will uh, i will just stay my i will just say my piece that um for like i said entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship it's not women entrepreneurship or men's entrepreneurship it's a function of how you deal with it and uh, the other thing is uh, empowerment i mean uh, i don't know why do we need empowerment we are empowered enough <laughs> like um, so uh, i i don't remember which interview was it perhaps some women's day interview only but it was like uh, i was like do you even realize that we are the creators of life and why why would you want to empower us we are empowered enough and uh, i i think it's a function of how you uh, put that to the right implementation to your use benefit of yours and um, and the advantage of others as well and uh, it's a function of uh, you know uh, how you going to project that and execute it i don't think women need empowerment uh i however wish and i pray for people who perhaps do not have the kind of support system that some other people have and uh, many people do have <coughs> struggles i mean whether it's their uh, whether it's their uh, you know parental family or married family or in laws family and a great deal of responsibilities that they have to deal with and i think uh, it's very important for parents to make their kids or daughters in this case uh, self sufficient and uh, capable enough to take care of their own self so that they don't have to compromise and make choices they can make the choices that they want to make so uh, i know uh, you know um, i'll just deja vu happening i have said this thing i think earlier also many times that um, i think it will take another generation to uh, make that fundamental change because now when we see our kids and you know we see parents like ourselves and there is no difference between a boy and a girl and they are given the equal opportunity they are given the equal amount of love affection care uh, you know and the right amount of investments in their career and there is no difference whatsoever so i i i, I don't think there will be a women's day in the next millennia <laughs> i mean yeah, that's, that's i yeah so i i fundamentally don't believe in it and um, whatever god has been kind uh, that i have been uh, um, i would say empowered enough to to kind of pave my way through it and i had to never ever feel this way uh, that i need empowerment in fact whenever i felt that there was something um, you empower somebody who's not uh, Um, at a disadvantage. At a disadvantage. So I think mm. if you are not at a disadvantage, then there should not be a question of empowerment. You are empowered enough. It's your choice if you have decided to lead life a certain way. You don't have to be a warrior. You know, like everybody, like people have their own choices. People do yeah. make homemakers by choice, and they uh, they do things by their own choice and will. And I think we have already seen enough of this. in life these days you see people from different walks of life and women doing different different things they are empowered they don't need empowerment however we we must do everything possible in our uh, capacity and uh, given the places that we are in our careers and life whatever we can in order to make sure that people who are not empowered enough we should be able to do enough to empower them yeah so whether it is in terms of uh, so in terms of recruitment in terms of uh, mentorship in terms of providing opportunities uh, uh, my organization is like that it's a perfect blend and in fact more women than men and uh, so it's a it's a majorly women led organization just it happened to be i did not want it to be like that but it just happened to be 
so people are evaluated based on their capabilities and their uh, uh, you know kpis kras and their feedback scores and it's 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 as covid as it can get <laughs> and um, <clears throat> so uh, i have been like that and uh, i also know many organizations who have been like that however it is the grade that defines it's the performance that defines and there is nothing above that and if uh, that is the defining factors and if the girls are growing then i mean they are getting empowered or they are empowering themselves and uh, we as individuals who have the ability to do that are we are doing our own bit thanks that's that's actually very empowering to hear from you because uh, yeah this is a very different take i think on the whole women empowerment scenario as you said if you're not at a disadvantage then there's no need to be you know yeah. there's no call for empowerment so yeah, yeah that's uh, that's a statement in itself so really really good to know from you <laughs> all right uh, so we are nearing the end of our interview mansi uh, my last question to you would be any parting book recommendation for our viewers mm there are many books actually but uh, whether it uh, you know if you are an entrepreneur then i would say mastery mm. mastery by robert brown so uh, it's a it's a it's a book that has made a very big uh, difference to my life like you know with every passing year i have felt it and uh, it uh, it's true but it takes time and uh, so mastery is that one book that i would recommend yeah oh nice um, i have not read uh, mastery in this interestingly so i think i will definitely pick it up uh, so it's by robert green my it. bad it's by robert green robert green yeah all yeah, right yeah. robert green i shall definitely add it in my reading bucket list <laughs> nice all right mansi thank you so much for uh, your time and i really really appreciate you taking out the time first of all i understand you are busy conquering the world so <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much and i also understand you might have you know, a lot of commitments uh, at your end as well but uh, it was so lovely speaking to you and hearing your perspective and again i cannot thank you enough from the entire team so thank yeah, you so much I, uh, thank you yes. thanks mansi